Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Test me, O God, and know my thoughts. See that my path is not wicked, and lead me in the way everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, in this Eucharistic celebration, we put our trust in our loving God, who provides even our smallest needs. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask Him for pardon and strength. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who delight in innocence and restore it, direct the hearts of your servants to yourself, that caught up in the fire of your Spirit, we may be found steadfast in faith and effective in works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, 
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his, his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More tortuous than all else is the human heart, beyond remedy. Who can, who can understand it? I, the Lord alone, probe the mind and test the heart to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord, and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Please stand. Papalad ang nag-iingat sa kanyang pusong matapat ng salitang nagpubuhat sa poong Diyos ng liwanag sa tiyagang ating ganang. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, Remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, 
Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, O oh, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The first reading today from the book of the prophet Jeremiah tells us of the blessing brought about by trusting in God and not trusting in men. The Lord reminds us today to put our complete trust in God. That is why in the first reading it is said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. Para pong sinasabi sa atin na ang taong nagtitiwala sa Diyos ay parang isang puno na nakatanim katabi ng isang sapa. Kahit dumating ang init, kahit dumating ang tagtuyot na nanatiling matibay, ang puno na yan. That is a man who trusts in God. And in our gospel passage today, we hear of the story of the rich man and Lazarus. So what do you think? Who among the two is like the man who trusts in the Lord? Is it the rich man or is it Lazarus? Jesus teaches us in our gospel story today, if we would look closely at the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus, a poor man who stayed just at the door of the house of the rich man, would gladly eat the scraps falling from the rich man's table. Ang kinakain lang niya ay yung mga maliliit na mumo na nakuhulog sa pinagkakainan ng mayaman. But see there, it is said, he would gladly fill himself he would gladly have eaten of the scraps. And even dogs would come to lick his sores. My dear brothers and sisters, in this story, Jesus teaches us that like Lazarus, the poor man who trusted God, when you have trust in God, even the little things you would gladly fill yourself with. Kapag mayroon kang pagtitiwala sa Diyos, kahit maliliit na bagay, sa paningin mo ay napakalaking biyaya na yan ng Diyos. That is the heart of a person who trusts in God. But a person who does not trust in God, even the greatest things would not suffice to him. Even the greatest treasures would not suffice for him to fill his belly and say, This is God's blessing for me. 
Yan pala ang pagkakaiba ng taong may tiwala sa Diyos at isang taong hindi nagtitiwala sa Diyos. Ang taong may tiwala sa Diyos, katulad ni Lazaro sa ating Ebanghelyo, kahit maliliit na pagkain, sa tingin niya, biyaya na ito ng Diyos. Kaunting pagkain, ikabubusog ko, salamat sa Diyos sa biyaya. But the rich man, he was already filling himself with sumptuous meals, would still feel, this is not yet enough for me. He has no trust in God. My dear brothers and sisters, today, let us allow Jesus to teach us about trusting in God. Let us today appreciate the small things that come our way and see that even in these small things, God is sending His blessings. And then, when we are able to recognize the small blessings that Jesus is giving us, then we will be able to build our trust in Him. Sana po sa araw na ito ay ma-appreciate muli natin yung mga maliliit na bagay na pinapadala ng Diyos at makilala natin ito pala ay mga pinadala ng Diyos. Ito pala ay mga biyaya ng Diyos. Halimbawa po, mamaya pagbalik ninyo sa inyong mga opisina, baka minsan hindi na natin nare-recognize yung mga tao na naglilinis sa opisina natin. Araw-araw naman nagwawali sila, nagpupuna sila doon, nililinis ang mga lamesa ninyo sa opisina, kailan kaya huli kang nagpasalamat sa kanila? At nasabi mo sa kanila na, alam mo, ikaw ay pinadala ng Diyos para maging malinis ang lugar namin. How many of us have thanked these little people, small people in our offices, in our workplaces, and tell them that even if they are doing a simple job in our places, they are great blessings from God. How many of us have recognized these small things? A person who can recognize God in the little things are those who trust in Him. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today, let us thank the Lord for these small scraps, for these small things that come our way, and once again, recognize that these small things are indeed great blessings from God. And when we recognize these little things, these little things that become great blessings, then we can be, uh, we are able to say that we are already building our trust in God. Amen. Please stand. As we remember the special needs of the poor, we come before our God who shared His riches with everyone by sending His Son into the world. For every petition, let us say, Father of the poor, bless us. Father of the poor, bless us. That the church may show forth the compassion of Christ for the poor who are struggling for a more just society. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of the poor, bless us. That those who are tempted to become slaves of wealth and material security may realize that spiritual poverty arises from refusing to share with others 
Let us pray to the Lord. Father of the poor, bless us. That we may all have the grace to show mercy and compassion, generosity and understanding to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father of the, the poor, poor, bless us. That the sick may be strengthened by the warmth of our Lord's loving presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of the poor, poor bless, bless us. That those who have died may share in the happiness and peace of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father of the poor, poor bless, bless us. Heavenly Father, in your love and mercy, fill us with the abundance of your generosity and help us to reach out to the less fortunate. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. By this present sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, sanctify our observance that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us Give this day our, our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we, we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, but only say the word, the word and, and my soul shall be healed. Shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May this sacrifice, O God, remain active in its effects and work ever more strongly within us. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Abide with your servants, O Lord, and who implore the help of your grace, that they may receive from you the support and guidance of your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.